Hey guys, we are going to talk about Popper Finance and it is quite interesting to how we got here. So before we begin, I am going to talk about Popper as a format. It is a fun format. I think it's a lot more fun than Tiny Leaders. It's a ton more fun than Frontier and it's much more casual. The entry point should be cheaper, but you know, some of these cards are going to spike just given their old age. Now, is the question I have is what, who does Popper help the most? And why are they pushing it so hard? It's not an organic push anymore. I know a lot of people point to EDH uh, and they want to compare Popper to EDH. They want to compare Frontier to EDH. They want to compare Tiny Leaders to EDH. The reason Tiny Leaders failed was because of greed. The quote inventor of Tiny Leader decided to try to trademark Tiny Leaders and a lot of what they were doing was not creative. They did not spend the time so the format was easily solved and there became one best deck and just like modern it became an issue of who controls the ban list. Whoever controls the ban list should this be a real format would actually make and make and lose or they would make a lot of money right they could hedge their bet they could be like all right we're going to ban this card so that means the next best card is up and let me buy a bunch of those cards and to a certain extent ed8 is the same way there is a person banning cards and that person could invest before the banning i mean that's just fact i don't know if that person does it uh, i believe his name is shaudan Maybe, maybe not. Depends on, you know, his character, right? And as we know, some magic pros have uh, interesting character traits. Well, you look at this card and it's a common, but it's only a common by name. It was in Commander deck. I believe this is the only time. Well, it's in a Commander deck and it's also in Commander Anthologies. It's an interesting scenario, right, where you have opportunities and these opportunities commons can be up to $10 a piece, which is very good given their previous price point. It's always a $5 common, but then Popper makes it a $10 common. Anything that Tolarian Community College says will double in price, maybe triple in price overnight. And you see a lot of support from these uh, Channel Fireball is supporting it quite a bit. And the push is because they benefit the most from selling cards they cannot sell. As someone who owns many of these cards, dozens if not hundreds of copies of some of them, the reason I own them is because I never had the ability to sell them. They are the cards that are like semi good, but not really good. And they would never be played in Legacy. They probably wouldn't be played in EDH all that often. And then one day, there's a new format. And the cards have just kept going up and up and up. So I will show you some of... Uh, I think previously I showed you a collection of Preordains and Ponders and stuff like that. I have hundreds of copies. If you played Magic as often and as aggressively buying collections as I did in the past, like five years ago, you cannot you have to have at least 100 Ponders and 100 Lightning Bolts. And these cards were un untradeable until recently. And now they, you can trade them in play sets of four for a $10 card, which is great. That uh, is definitely excellent for me. So my biggest concern about Popper is very simple. It's the same concern I had about Tiny Leaders and Frontier. My concern is that it, people get too greedy and they push it too fast. Uh, EDH was extremely organic. Wizard of the Coast did not support it, I mean, until much later. And if you were around, so EDH was when JST Mind Sculptor was like 100 bucks and then they banned it. Or uh, IP JST Mind Sculptor, $100. Fascinating time. And it was a bunch of judges, made a format, made a lot of sense. It was A, cheaper. That was a big part of it. It was cheaper than Legacy. Or the point was you could play cards that you wanted that you grew up with and you didn't need four copies of it. You didn't need four underground seas, which at that time was like like $120, $150. I know Tundra was $120 uh, around that time. 
So you have a very fascinating experiment. And I would only say it as an experiment. I don't think you should invest in it. But if you want to buy a deck, yeah, buy a deck because it's not going to cost that much money. If you want to play it, play it. You know, buy a few different decks. Uh, it's cheaper than standard. It doesn't rotate out like standard. It has all the benefits of legacy, but without the cost. And that is the ideal format. That's going to be the format that just goes up, up, up in price. Now, my, the trade-off is, do the people who benefit from this format, will they actually support it? That's the question. So Frontier received a lot of support, and then suddenly it died because the stores didn't want to support it anymore. They weren't making enough money, or they just got distracted, I guess. Then it died. Popper has support from the biggest MTG celebrity, Tolarian. So that's a definite positive. And it also has support from a lot of legacy players. Uh, this is a way... Initially, I was very skeptical because you have to understand we just had Frontier, we just had Tiny Leaders. The whole purpose of Frontier was to sell cards. 100%, I can tell you that. The whole purpose of Tiny Leaders was to make the inventors of Tiny Leaders rich. 100% guarantee you that. And when someone you know, has a devious purpose, like Pico Trade, right? So Pico Trade could have been the best platform ever. But the owner, Eric, wants to take $5 million out. So his purpose was never to create, he created, he had, he had lightning in a bottle. And then instead of like running with it and helping the community and doing a good job and not inflating, what's the inflation in Pico Trade now? Like something ridiculous, right? 400 points to a dollar maybe. Instead of controlling all these aspects, because if he controlled, you know, okay, maybe I'm not going to give as many points to Tolarian today. Maybe I'm not going to give as many points to Weds. Yeah, there's a reason he's giving points to MTG celebrities to promote his product. He wants viral growth, but that has a cost. And the cost will be not attributed by him, who has $5 million. The cost will be attributed by the current people holding the bags. So, again, I looked at Crip Rats, and this is just so ridiculous that it is a dollar card. Well, I guess a $2 market. I, I'd say it's a dollar. <laughs> I know it's in one of the top popper decks, and I know it's really fun and interactive. But, man, I can't I couldn't imagine this being a dollar ever. Uh, even when I played in Visions, I was like, yeah, it's not bad, but mm, kind of like a mini Pestilent. I never understood why you would not why you would not play Pestilence over this one. Pestilence is a very good card, by the way. I I know it's still incredibly cheap. I know it's been reprinted, but in Urza Saga, given how powerful that set was, Pestilence I think was one of the most dominating cards in draft and limited, and definitely a good card in standard at the time. Very interactive for multiplayer as well. So I'm getting used to. I'm going to say Popper is a go. I would say buy decks, but I would not say invest in it. Um, I don't see this as a long-term investment. I see a lot of people who have these cards, they're selling them on, they are trying to get rid of them. And that's not a key indicator to me. Like when, if you have something that's truly valuable, you don't, you don't actually want it to go up in price. You want to accumulate as many of this as possible. I always tell the Falia story. And Falia was $2 for the longest time, for months on months, maybe even years, it was $2, maybe $2.50. That is a perfect speculation in my mind because I know Falia was going to be $10. I didn't know she would be 20. That's a little far fetched, but I mean, she's 20 now. But I knew unique card, beautiful artwork, very good in death and taxes, already played in Legacy as soon as he came out. I mean, she was the deck, she was death and taxes. The deck does not exist without her. So I would rather buy, buy, buy. So you don't want to buy into the hype, which is what people are doing right now. You don't want to speculate into the hype. If you need a deck, get the deck. You don't want to buy when the cards are trending up like this, like almost 90 degrees up. That's a bad, that's very bad, or 45 degrees up. Very bad trend. Um, you want to buy cards when the, you know it's going to be good and no one else is buying it and now you have an opportunity to buy that card for the next year at that price point. 
it's already too late to speculate on Popper. So whenever you read a finance article or you listen to some financy people, it's already too late. It's already too late. So if everyone has the information that Popper is exploding and you should quote invest in Popper, no. You cannot, if a card like needle drop, let's say it is five cents and now it is three dollars, the time to buy into it is not three dollars, right? Uh, it's already gone. The time to buy into it is if you think Popper is a real deal, you accumulate a list of cards that haven't spiked, that you believe are very good cards, and you buy into it and you see what happens. So that's my perspective on Popper. It's interesting. I definitely have benefited from it, so I'm not going to complain too much. For it to really expand, it needs to, I, I hate to say this, but it needs to be an official Wizard of Coast product. That's how Commander, Commander was incredibly pop popular, but fully or an organic movement. And when Wizard of Coast started making these decks that allow people to immediately buy into the game, that's when the player growth exploded because instead of having to decide a hundred different cards, you can just buy a commander deck. You can just buy Kalia. And after you're done buying Kalia, you know what? You can add more dragons, more angels, more demons, better mana base, and it's much easier to do that. Anyway, that is it. Uh, leave me a comment below if you think Popper is a real deal. And if it is a real deal, then there's still a lot of investment opportunities. Like Curse of Chains, I, w w it's so bad, unless it's in Popper. Anyway, bye guys.